In this video, we're going to look at measures of position, um, starting with z-scores. We're also going to look at percentiles. Um, the first question gives us um, the number of tornadoes in the country in 2005. I already have this data entered into my calculator, into one of my lists. Um, the question says, using a sample standard deviation, comp compute the z-score for 62. Um, I'll give you the formula for the z-score. The z-score compares the score of 62 to the mean. So we want to take the raw score, x, minus the mean, so mu if I'm using population data, divided by the standard deviation. This is for population. Because of the symbols, I'm using mu and sigma. Or for a sample, I would take that data value. I would subtract my mean, x bar, or you could call that m, and then divide that by s, so that would be for sample data. We're going to treat these tornadoes as sample data, um, like the question indicates. So what we need to do is to figure out, we've got x, so I'm going to use the sample one, we've got x, which is 62. I need the mean, so I'm going to figure out how far away we are from the mean, and then compare that to the standard deviation. Let me bring my calculator up here. I've already got my data into um, one of my lists, so if I go stat and then edit, I've entered the data into L2, you can put yours into L1, what I want to do is to run one variable stats, so I'm going to quit here, I'm going to go to stat, calc, one variable stats, this is the older operating system, if you've got prompts here, you can go ahead and follow the prompts, you want um, your list to be L1, and then your frequency, you can leave that blank. But I want just L1 here. If you've got the other format, the very next screen will look just like mine. Um, one variable stats. So I've got that standard deviation of 70.5. So let me write this into my formula. 70.5. And we're using this as a sample. So I want the standard deviation, um, S, which is 17. We'll call that 17.407. I'm going to hang on to some extra decimal places because I'm not done calculating. Um, if you want to do this all in, at, at once, you can put parentheses there. So let's go ahead and compute that. I want 62 minus 70.5. This is the deviation right here. That tells me how far 62 is from the mean. And I want to divide that by the standard deviation. Standard deviation is the typical distance from the mean for all of my data. I get negative 0.488. So let me write that down. So this is about negative 0.488. Make sure you're reading the instructions carefully so that you know um, how many decimal places you want. Let me draw you a picture of what's going on here. We had a mean of 70.5. I want to know how 62 compares. I know 62 is lower. Okay, so if this is 70, um, 70.5, we'll say this is 70 here, 60, 50, 80, 90, and so on. I've got my data value, which I know is lower. It's right here, of 62. But I don't know how much lower it is, relatively speaking, compared to the rest of my data. Well, we found a z-score, so if I redo my scale here in red, the mean has a z-score of 0. It's 0 away from the mean. 62 has a z-score of negative 0.488. So it's really, relatively speaking, not that far from the mean. Standard deviations that are far from the mean are ones that are outside of two standard deviations or three standard deviations. We're not even outside of one standard deviation. Let's do the next computation. Uh, the next one is the z-score for 132. Okay, 132 lives way over here somewhere, 132. Let's figure out its z-score. So the z-score for 132 is the score minus the mean, okay, so that's the deviation, how far it is from the mean, divided by the standard deviation, we're using that 17.407 that we got from the calculator. If we type this in, 132 minus 70.5 divided by 17.407, we get, relatively speaking, a really big um, z-score, 
3.533. On my z-score scale, let me redraw it. Zero, one standard deviation, negative one. Two standard deviations, negative two. This is where I expect most of my data to live. Um, somewhere upwards of like 97%. Okay, negative three and three. My score of 132 lives way over here with a z-score of 3.533. If you've ever had a, um, a blood test done and they're checking your cholesterol level and some other things and they say that you're within a normal range, typically they use a normal range of any z-scores between negative three and three. If you're in an abnormal range, then you're outside of three standard deviations. So it's a really commonly used scale to compare how far off you are to how far off typical values are. Okay, so that is the next one. Let me go ahead and get back to my worksheet here. We'll fill in what we've got so far. Part A, 62 was less than that mean, and it had a z-score of negative 0.488. Um, part B, 132 was greater than the mean, and it had a relatively big z-score of 3.533. Now we're going to move on to percentiles. Percentiles also compare values to, um, to our list. For the percentile, so this is, would be the percentile for 132, we want to know how 132 compares to everybody else in terms of a percentage. So we want the number of scores below 132. To that we're going to add 0.5 for an adjustment in case there's some that are equal to 132. <clears throat> and then we're going to divide by n. Take all of that and multiply it by 100 so we get a percentage. So I want to find all the scores below 132. You could order this. You know what? I'm going to, my, I'm going to let my calculator do it. Let's go to Stat, um, Edit. I'm going to go up to this list here. See how it's not in order? If I go back to, and in order I mean lowest to highest, if I go back to my home screen, I've got a list menu here. I'm going to go second list. Um, under operations, I can sort ascending or sort descending. Let's sort ascending. What do I want to sort? I want to sort L2. So second L2 or second 2. Hit enter. It says done. Now let's check my list. Stat. Oops, I want edit. Stat edit. Yay, now I'm in order. So I want to find how many scores are below 132. Uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 7. Okay, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So I've got 7 scores below. So for ours, this is 7 plus 0.5 divided by the total number of values that we have, which I never did count. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. So divided by 12 times 100. So I can just type this right in. So 7.5 divided by 12 is 60.625 times 100. We always want a whole number for these. I get 62.5. Always round up. Even if that was 62.1, I would still round it up to 63. So we say we're in the 63rd. Um, 60, let me write that again. The 63rd percentile. Remember how 132 was, was pretty far along the um, scale when we were looking at those z-scores? Well, I also know now that 63% of the scores are either at or below 132. So 63% uh, are at or below that score of 132. So really common on standardized tests. They'll give you a score back of like an 82, and you know that you scored um, better than or the same as 82% of the other people taking the tests. Okay, D and E. We're going to look for a 25th percentile and a 75th percentile. So we know how to compute a percentile, and that's this formula here. If we want to figure out where the 25th percentile is, we're going to take 25%, which would be 0.25, times the number of scores that we have, and the number of scores that we had was 12. 0.25 times 12 is 3, 
and that's co going to correspond to the 25th percentile. So I want to find the third highest score. I can go back to my list. Whoops, edit. And that would be at 26. So this would be 26. So I, I found the third value. So 1, 2, 3 is the third value when my data is in order. The next one is the 75th percentile. So I take 0.75 times 12. So I'll go 0.75 times 12, and I end up with 9. So I want the, th uh, this is the third, this would be the ninth data value. In order, so I'm going to go back to that list that I ordered. Whoops, edit. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. So that would be 133. So the key is that your values are in order. You find out what percentage you are along the data. 0.75 times 12 is 9, so I wanted that ninth data value at 133. So those give us both measures of position for z-scores and the percentiles. Um, in the next video, we're going to take a look at um, quartiles and box plots.